what, the, the show at TT's? Yeah. Because I was like, I don't know. Yeah, it was weird. I just, I just wandered in and, and stuff, and uh, Sam said, you know, they're not here, and Bonnie was, was bitching about, like, that they had to get on stage, so, like, this guy sang, and, like, Sam played, and I played. Yeah, they were, they were really pissed off, because, uh, this is... Well, to put it with one thing and having nothing to do with me at the time, they were pissed off. <laughs> but then again, those guys. You see my beer? Yeah. Is that my beer? I do that all the time. I hate when that man. fucking happens. I do it all the time, man. Every party I go to, I'm the, I'm the one who's walking around. Like, <laughs> Shit, man. And then everybody else starts doing it. <laughs> And it's like, who knows who's going to just goddamn drink it, man. That's what you got to do sometimes. Man. It's the truth. A true truth. He is, because when we've crashed in prison, right before I turned out the lights, man, he sees a half drunk rolling rock. And he goes over and goes, wow. Charlie, I'm going to make a confession. I still don't know who is. Mm -hmm. You put him down and I go You'd move him. him up. What is this? Oh, I've never done that at Clark and Maggie's. It's evil. Horrible. Beer is something that should never be messed with like that. I'm totally fine. Anyway. It would always be the last one. Though. All right. And I'm pretty gullible. Yeah, and you didn't need it anymore. Yeah, that's always the reason. I was at a party at Amherst one time, and like they're ultra-liberal and stuff, and they all like sort of surround you and like beam love on you and say, here, let me take that beer from you. Take this healthful orange juice instead. You know, sort of enlightened. You know. And then, you know, they say, talk it's so laced with something. Like no. <laughs> they talk so convincingly about it that you believe them. Like, wow, they really do love me and are looking out for my best interests. I'd better do as they say. Mm -hmm. You know, sort of brainwashed. Like, sort of a Jim yeah. Jones sort of thing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> People do have a tendency to do that from time to time. Yeah. yeah. Gang up in groups. Sometimes you Especially when they drink. People can't deal with just themselves sometimes, too. They want to have a group to absorb their personality for a little while. It's not unlike the symposium of being in a band where one's brain must be shared with the other members. The creative flow. And you get pissed off, but you don't want to wreck it. No, I mean, I don't really get pissed off about creative things that much. I get pissed off about other shit. Other stuff, you know, that uh, that, that uh, really uh, bugs me. But as far as like uh, creatively, no, no, I think we we gel pretty well. Are you guys really churning them out now? Because you come out with this, oh, no. oh. and you come out with an album. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we we did the album that was too too many songs. No, it was twelve songs, and then we did the single. We just did as as three new songs on it and two old. Is that songs. a forty and two? Which one? Did you say too many songs? What did you say? Too many songs? About too many songs. I think there's oh. too many songs on our album. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's not really a major thing, really. But, you know, 12 songs is a record, so if you have 12 songs, and right. even if some of them aren't quite as stellar as the others, or they, if you can make them fit in, so it like, flows. It was kind of like, it was like what Chick would like to say, he goes to cleaning up a house. And it was that, you know what I mean? It was the songs that had been written over a long period of time, and we wanted to lay them all down, and then die away. You're referring to your latest album, Laughing Down the Line Yes. Now, what's the name of your new album going to be? You told me earlier, I forgot. Well, we're kicking around a few things, but I mean, we all really like uh, Sick Luck. Sick Luck? We've, well, we've been living it for about at least nine months now. Pretty much all of us. Everybody, 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 all my friends, everybody, you know. Well, without sounding too woeful, tell us, yeah. like, what sorts of things. <laughs> Uh, Don't be too depressing, man. No, man, it's just, this is hard times, man. Every, there's not a band I know that's not skin. It's like it affects Valerie, that, Tina, Lisa, little Julian. No, we feel. <laughs> but yeah, it happens yeah. to everybody. It's a recession, man, whatever you want to call it. That's that's the fun of But it's like, you're kind of thinking about it. I don't know. So that's that's kind of why we want to name the album Sick Luck and uh, uh, do that. Because it's really the truth. We may call it Moon Drugs or something. Moon Drugs? 
Yeah. As opposed to Martian or Venusian drugs. Well, there's a sign. There's this old neon sign in Nashville. Oh, great. And it says moon it drugs. It says moon. It's a pharmacy, and it says moon drugs. It's got like a half moon. Uh, star. It's really, really neat lettering, like twenties style lettering. It's, it's interesting. Oh, well, yeah. Where is this again? It's in uh, this area. Is it Bell Mead? Yeah, it's right next to Bell Mead Theater, which is like an original 1950s theater. I saw Lawrence of Arabia down there, and I went and saw Lawrence of Arabia there. And it was excellent. You know, big, huge, wide screen. 30 70 millimeter. millimeter. 70 millimeter, whatever it was, that when they re-released it. And it's just one theater, and there's all these people who work there. They look like they've been working there for you know, they closed 40 it down, years. Or yeah, they closed it down. They like shut it down. A few big corporations ago. moved in. Shaisa. And all that rot. You're lucky if it's big corporations. Maybe. Why shutting down like a little theater like that? They, if they're a big corporation, they have so much money, they should be able to keep that thing open just for the novelty, man. Mm -hmm. They yeah. should, because it was great to go see a movie there, and I would have gone see more movies there if they played better movies. You know, it's like $3, and you go in, and it's a beautiful theater, and it's huge, and it was great. People don't take time out enough from that shit anymore, man. A lot of people... A lot of people, when they go, they do, I mean, it, like, they, they do it like feeding frenzies, like sharks, like... Oh, there's a movie to play, <laughs> and they all go out and they see, and, they, and you know, the they just, yeah, they spend all their money, and you know, whatever. It's like it's like you know, sending like Cabbage Patch Kids or something like that. It's like a frenzy of money. Feeding Trample and Kmart. Yeah, yeah. Well, I went to see um, Corporation Cheese. Sounds of the Lambs, and then right next door was New Jack City. So we popped in on that for a little while. Yeah, Valerie and I have done many, th much theater hopping. So you can do that now, it's like a multiplex, and they don't yeah. even really care. Yeah. Two is okay, I think three, they start to get a little ticked they off. They can't really stop you, you know, they really can't, you know, if you do it right. Like, we went and saw, uh, this is like half an hour or 45 minutes of Bugs Bunny cartoons, and it was uh, for muscular dystrophy, and it was like $3 to get in, so two of us went, and all our money went to charity. And we immediately walked down the hall and went and saw Dick Tracy right after the mm. Bugs Bunny cartoon. Of course. And we would have stayed and seen another one, but we were tripping so hard we just had to get out of there. So. Did you see? Uh, <laughs> did you see the Robert Rabbit cartoon before Dick yeah. Tracy? Oh yeah, it was awesome. It that blew was the, the Bugs best. Bunny cartoon away, man. That was the best. Robert Rabbit part of the whole <laughs> movie, I thought. And they reissued it on on cassette. Now. Ricardo. The, I don't think that cartoon. <laughs> no, the cartoon was really good. It was. It was, it was well killer. Man. It was excellent. It was really it blew because like I, you see, it, it was kind of newer. Bugs Bunny, so it wasn't, you know, a really good 45 minutes or a half an hour Bugs Bunny. Oh, I mean like the 60s stuff or the 50s Yeah, stuff? like the 50s and 60s stuff and maybe one one or two. Of the vintage Warner yeah, Brothers production. Yeah, like they had like a bunch of Bugs Bunny in the beginning and then they reduced themselves to the rabble of the 60s Daphne's and things like that. Daphne. Which is just garbage. Really. You know, after, after Daphne stops going woo-woo, it's over, man. I don't want to see it. Dude, Daphne's going to go woo-woo in that cartoon. <laughs> I don't want to see it, man. Like, that's that's when he's great. Daffy Duck, man. He's sort of like the um, the, the polarized negative of Donald Duck. I mean, you know, Donald's white, he's black. Donald is like, and Daffy is like just totally anarchic. Yeah. So Donald is like this sort of grumpy, bourgeois, middle class person who lives out in the suburbs, and Daffy is this institutionalized, insane duck. He's totally wild, man. He's great. Yeah, have you ever seen the one where everybody's, they're all angles, everything's done in really straight lines, and Daffy's like just like a seven the whole time. It's <laughs> great, man. It's really cool. And they, they fight with knives, and there's the big fat father, and the little girl loves him. That's my ducky. You can't hurt my ducky. It's <laughs> a killer, man. It's really good. So this here new album of yours. Sick Luck. Yes. Yeah. Can you tell us some of the songs that may be on it? Well, right now we have a song called the Vagrant Blues, and, uh, that we played that tonight, that was the last song, and uh, that's that's going to be on it for sure. And we may do a, a redone version of 15 Seconds and 5 Days, which is on the new single we just released. What's the B side of that? Uh, B side is Buick McCain and... Uh, I can hang on when I don't think. Do we have any cover versions coming out? Well, Buick McCain by T-Rex. Oh, okay. This is a cover, but on that, oh yeah, we just did the Imaginary Records compilation. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's cool. What's the Imaginary Records compilation? Uh, I was like, I think they put out they put out a Neil Young tribute thing, The Birds. They did a Hendrix one, and, yeah. but we, we, we did a Dylan one and a 1968 one. What was the Dylan song? Should, should we reveal the Dylan song? Yeah, man. It's Tombstone Blues. Oh, that's 
from Highway 51. We did it at Fort Apache with uh, Sean Slade and Paul. Had a great time. Was in a, had a killer Sean day. Sean Slade did a organ. He did the organ on uh, on Tombstone Blues, and it was a rock and roll moment, man. It he, was. He went for it. It was great. When's this going to be released? I Who knows? But somewhere like in the next year, maybe. Yeah, I think uh, Sonic Youth is on it, and uh, so does uh, Buffalo Tom. Did some, did some song, and, and Sean Dylan. wouldn't tell us. Sean wouldn't tell us what it was on the yeah. Dylan. Dylan. Well, tell me, um, when you think of 1968, what songs do you associate with? White you? album. White album. So, what are some of the songs on this upcoming 1968 album? Do you know? Uh, I know. Days. Oh, they're gonna do that. That's good. I I know. Um, H. P. Zinker did um, a King Crimson song, but I don't know what song. But uh, we, we did um, Child of the Moon by the Rolling Stones so on the flip side of uh, Jumping Jack Flash. I wanted to do Your Blues. Yeah, or something like that. I, I, would, I would love to do long, long, long by George Harrison. Yeah. But those are like just a little later than 1968. So. Well, those are all in the White Album. So the White Album 68 is yeah, See, right. that, that was the big question we had for a little while. I, thought, I actually thought when the recording came about and we decided to do Child of the Moon, uh, I thought that, that it had been 69. So I said, okay, well, pass the light out, and it didn't come out in 68 anyway. But I mean, I kind of wish that maybe the record company Imaginary had given us like a sheet of records and albums and bands that were functioning in 68 and released albums in 68, because then you could look at it and, you know what I mean? For all you bands with this problem, um, you can look in the Billboard Book of Top 40 Hits, and they have a year-by-year -year summary of the top 20 hits of any given year. Yeah, but what about just albums in general, though? You know, all, all that, that they don't offer. Someone should. Just could have the used record shop, man. And Talk Check to it out. Talk to just somebody. look at look through all the records. Like Cheapo Records, just on the street from here, this, their stuff's extremely knowledgeable, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if they could reel off ten right off the top of their head albums that came out in '68. Yeah, but we were in Nashville where people don't think about that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly. Tell us what they do think about in Nashville. Uh -huh. Money. No, okay. Well, well our, I don't necessarily think our peers are like that. Oh no, not yeah, true. But the the town itself, you know, like we couldn't go down the to cheapo records. The people we hang with, they think about, uh, yeah. You know, what I mean, there's no cheapo records in Nashville. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, people we hang with are underground, you know, people for sure. I mean, it's yippies and everybody seems to drink. A lot of drinking goes on in Nashville. A lot. I'm serious. serious. Like it's it's a heavy drinking town. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Who are the names of some of the bands you share a bill with down in Nashville? Oh, uh, Clockhammer. We're uh, doing a show with Firehose tonight. Are they? In Hoboken, yeah. That's killer. They rock. They're, they're actually at Bun Ready's just the other night. Um, the night of the Harlequin. Music Awards. Harlequin. They played with Harlequin, yeah. Harlequin. We, got, we got to go, we, we missed Clockhammer, we had to go to the music, the Boston Music Awards. And then we went from there to, to see Bun Ready's and we saw um, Harlequin play, that was great. But we missed uh, Clockhammer. But we played with them in Providence just the other night with Firehose. We opened for Firehose and uh, they played. Yeah, really, we really liked that, man. Oh, Firehose kicks ass, man. And, uh, I, I loved opening for them. One of the first times they played out was with TT the Bears mm -hmm. back in 1986. Yeah. I was, they had just joined. I, I went and saw that show. They, I, they didn't impress me then, and I haven't really seen them since. You know. I'd seen the minute, man. Like at the channel, like, you know, years ago. But way back when I was a little munchkin. There's an, another band, um, uh, Young Brothers. <laughs> now your lead singer Chick, he's from Knoxville, isn't he? Yeah, so am I, man. Oh, okay. Well, actually, Chick and I are like, he lived like on one side of the Blue River and I lived on the other side. In different counties. Tell us a little bit about that, Charlie. Uh, you know, well, that, what were, how were those counties different? How was the place where Chip grew up different from the place where you grew up? Well, there's always a lot of heat as soon as you drove into my county. A lot of heat and a lot of fuzz parked on the side of the road. And it's kind of like that. And Chick's from Knox County, which is like large. It's got like University of Tennessee. It's like, you know, it's just, it's not, not really that much of a difference. All the people are the same. It's just, Maybe a little more of an local urban, government things. Urban sensibility, yeah. as opposed to a rural. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So there was a lot. Was there a lot of like beer drinking and pickups and yeehawing? I mean, 
we Northerners have a pretty sort of uh, skeptical view of what goes on. I mean, on. a lot of house parties and stuff, you know, people have parties. And, yeah, there was that. In, in Nashville, though, it's, it's, it's kind of the same, really. I mean, it's like it's a big sort. city, which is kind of rural. Yes. In its temperament. Nashville's a funky place. It's cool, you know. I like living there, you know. I, you know, I don't really have too many mm. complaints about it. So Chris, um, you're from somewhere in Massachusetts, aren't you? Yes, actually. I'm from Extreme Hometown, uh, Framingham. Uh, extreme. What was Framingham like, you know? Framingham? Yeah. Framingham's pretty funky. It's really kind of like, there's North Framingham and South Framingham, and then you got know, one side of the river and the other side, or whatever separates those two areas. <laughs> And South Framingham's like uh, kind of the poorer section of town. That's where I was from, south of the river. Yeah, yeah, kind of like this, this, this seedy area. And I lived there when I was young. And then I, I was able to, my mom was able to move up in the world. And we moved to the northern side of town. And I got to go to the northern high school and all that, you know. So that's like the upper class, um, mid class people. Now they've joined and the cheerleaders are freaking yeah, out. Yeah, it's in the paper and stuff. They're putting the two schools into one school now because yeah. there's not enough enrollment, you know, which is expected. But, it, what it was is, is, is Framingham really didn't exist before the 50s. It was established as a place for like all the people from IBM and uh, General Motors. as a General Motors plant there, or there was. They shut it down. But that was the, you know, basically it was created for people just to live there. And then it became Mall City. Like the Golden Mile is there with Natick and all that stuff. Yeah. So it's really kind of like, a, I don't know, it was a good place to grow up in, I guess. You know, it was just, it was, it was, you know, on the wild side and yet it was like really mild. So like no one's gonna get killed or anything nasty. Nothing too nasty is gonna happen to you. But you know you got to experience everything you needed to or whatever you need to experience in life. I, I think Mr. Butch spent some time in Framingham. I believe that. It's it, it's it, I mean I know a Green Magnet School lives out there and they're, they're from there and stuff. So it's it's pretty it's it's pretty much a breeding ground for people who are just gonna move on into you know cor corporate society or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Say hi to my mom and Frank here and my brother and Nick. Let's talk a little bit about your fourth band member who we haven't referred to yet. Oh, Mr. Cugini. Chris is also from Framingham, actually. So he and I grew up in the same town, not unlike Chick and Charlie. So, and uh, that's, I don't know, it seems to be a natural involvement, and that's something uh, I don't understand. Cugini uh, told me a story he hit from the cops when he was a teenager on a cliff. This court or something in Framingham, but the cops were running after him. Up on Dobbs Mountain. Yeah, and they were trying to. He was like, I didn't. He could see their flashlight. And yeah. Sing to that. The shaved head punk rock. Well, no, he was, uh, he was, he was more of a, a long haired. Uh, oh, he was? Long haired hippie for a little while. Was he? He wouldn't appreciate the word hippie, I guess, but uh, he, was, uh, he was more on that lackadaisical side of life than the harsh <laughs> reality of punk rock. Cutting edge and all that stuff. But then he switched over when he was older, which is really cool. Switched over to Keith Richard. Well, now first he switched over to being more of like a, it was a punk thing. I remember we, uh, he was in a band with um, a band called Rude Awakening, with um, Scott Sanborn from the drummer from Heyday and uh, and um, uh, Chris Sanborn. Um, Chris Sanborn, the drummer from Haiti, and Scott Sanborn, the bass player from Chloe, and they did a show, and Chris wore, his head was shaved, and he wore a, a minister's collar <laughs> around his neck, and they did they did their set, and at the end, they smashed all their guitars. This is like in somebody's living room. They smashed all their guitars together and, and like, stomped off, and it was the most dynamic show I've ever probably seen in my yeah. life. Yeah, blew me away. House parties. Yeah. Anyway, so we, I guess we have to wrap up our interview. Is there a final question you'd like to shoot at us? Just um, introduce yourselves by names. Charles. Chris? Pleased to meet you, Bill. The group is Anastasia Scream. Their latest album is called Laughing Down the Limehouse. And they'll have a forthcoming single. Tell us the name of that one more time. 15 Seconds or Five Days with the flip side of Buick McCain by T-Rex. Where will that be available? Or I should say when? It, it sh I don't know when it's going to be available. In America, it'll also have, also have tied off the album Laughing Down the Limehouse and Samantha Black, the single mix from some from Laughing Out Loud House on it. So it'll be an EP, it'll have five songs on it, it'll be a bargain, a deal. Are you doing any gigs you know, around this area in June or July of this year? We may. We, we could come up and do that. We're really not sure right now. We're going to focus on making the new album 
Sick luck. Sick luck. And when will that be made available to you estimate? Oh, man. With any luck by October, but it may not be until our lab no, online house was released in December, so it may not come until December. Yeah, that's true. Because uh, it is an English label. They, they released first in England, and then they followed up in America. So. Well, this was a very pleasant chat that we've had with Anastasia. Thanks for having us over, man. Yeah, thank you very much, Francis. We well, appreciate it. My pleasure and my privilege. And now tell me, what music would you like to hear? Right now? I'd like to hear some killer moving targets, man. You should definitely play some moving targets. I think I could arrange that. I'll be right back. Could do, but this is Kenny Chambers, one of his favorite albums. Kenny's awesome, man. When we were in Berlin, we did uh, we played at this club, and uh, and uh, Kenny was recording his album right nearby the studio, and uh, he came over and opened the uh, yeah. He, he opened up the set. He opened up the set with. Uh, Four or five songs from his cool. new album that he's just recorded on a solo thing. Cool. And it was great, man. It was great to have him come down and do that. It was excellent. Very way to warm up the set. Well, you know, we did some shows with Firehose, man. Yeah. Which were really cool. Firehose Mike Watts, the bass god of all time, man. Long live movie targets and Firehose and he's most a beat, of all. man. He's got it together. Anastasia Scream. <laughs> Anastasia Scream! That's what he said, man.